All right, hi and welcome to this uh, next episode in our tutorial series on doing a DirectX application from scratch. Um, in the last episode, I talked a bit about how the pipeline state itself uh, was set up, or rather the pipeline on the G, uh, in terms of doing rendering was set up, what we need to do a pipeline, and uh, basically what is a prerequisite for doing draw calls. In this episode, we will start creating the actual shader programs um, and the wrapper for uh, the shader. Maybe I'll wait with the, no, I'll do a basic shader program since it's not many lines of code. So we will create the wrapper for our shaders. And um, since shaders are a pi part of a, um, a pipeline, we will simply create a folder for that. Um, we will create an HLSL shader. HLSL is the Microsoft shader language, which DirectX 12 uses. So it makes sense to call our shaders that. We will, of course, create our namespace. And uh, let's see, I don't think we want a wrapper for the first time in our whole series. We do not have a DirectX interface. And uh, we are creating our own wrapper here. which we will allow our system to default construct, meaning that it can be empty. We, um, of course, need to do this public. We could also do an instruct, but I can't remember whether it's needed. We, we want to initialize, <laughs> excuse me, um, our uh, um, shader program. And when we initialize it, we want to do compilations. Uh, com uh, compilations. Um, we will take a, a long pointer to a, a wide string in terms of a, the file name. Since we will be working with files, since we can do different shader programs, as you see here, uh, it is also preferable that we create um, a sort of um, enum class uh, maybe related to our actual shader itself. So let's do an enum shader type and we will do vertex pixel shaders here. And this will also take a const shader type. And, oh, I forgot the namespace. I'm about to go insane. All right, so our shader will take a file name and a shader type. Um, we will implement more functionality in just a bit. Um, this will take a series of flags, which are all uints. Um, shader compilation, direct X12. Uh, uh, 
compile. And we need to call this function here. Compile from file. We can look up the uh, different. Uh, there are. We need the file name. We need the, some macros. We don't uh, dive into macros today. Uh, we could do an include file. Uh, we need an entry point. Uh, we need a, a compilation target, and then we can set some flags. Let's see. We can do compilation debug. We like that, since we are not um, um, really done with our application. These are not uh, production flags, of course, but um, we would like them. Uh, anyway, you could do uh, different uh, builds in terms of, <coughs> excuse me, um, 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 different uh, um, compilations of your program here. Uh, okay, I think uh, we also need a header file. Let's see uh, what does the documentation say. Uh, uh, to compile this, uh, we need to use this function, which is stored in. Uh, do we have a library specification? Yeah, uh, D3D compiler. That is why our uh, macros there do not register. So we uh, let's see want to include that. We want a, uh, a D3D compiler, and I know that this also needs a lib, so we will be adding our uh, D3D compiler.lib, which it also states here. Let's see. So we need that. Now our flag does register. We can go back to our flag lists. Um, we don't want uh, um, optimization since we're still debugging and we want output in terms of uh, whether our application really compiles. Uh, let's see. You can change the data set in terms of how matrices are stored. Optimization levels. You can actually specify warnings are errors and we want some clean and uh, nice shader program code. So I think we are gonna use that flag. It will mean that the uh, shader will not compile even if we only get a warning. Uh, we want uh, to make sure that our resources are bound in terms of compilation. That's also in terms of um, um, referencing in the actual shader programs and the pipeline itself. And do we want any other flags? I'm not sure that uh, we want any other flags. Let's see. No, I think we're actually good here. Great stuff. All right, so as I've mentioned, we will compile a shader program into bytecode. <clears throat> we, uh, 
we want some error outputs here in terms of the actual compilation. You can see that this method here returns an, uh, one of the return codes. Well, there are different re return codes. One of them is, is OK if everything went fine. So this corresponds to our H result. And we will simply, well, I can't spell. Um, um, store the result of this operation here in an H result, and then we can do some uh, um, handling of that error. As I've mentioned, we will not be doing macros. We can do, simply do a zero here. The uh, include um, pointer here can be set, but uh, an addition, an optional pointer to an include interface, blah, blah, blah. If you set it to zero and the shader contains an include file, you will uh, get a compile error. We can instead pass this macro, which is a pointer to the default include handler. Um, it includes files that are relative to the, cur to the current directory, which is basically like we do our C++ uh, includes. So we will use that macro. We need to specify an entry point. You can specify whatever you want, but like in C++, I actually like that our entry point is called main. Then we need to specify, uh, let's see our target platform. And you might ask, what on earth is a uh, target platform? Well, um, there are different platforms here. I think uh, um, we want the shader model, which is listed over here as 5.1, maybe. Yeah, let's see feature support. It was listed here, uh, wiki direct X. If you remember in our previous episode, we can actually check. Well, okay, uh, we have actually shader model 6.0 support with our feature level of 12.1. Uh, remember, this was the highest we could go in Windows 10. Windows 12, you can go uh, uh, feature model 12.2. Uh, uh, or if you have the Agility SDK, you can also do um, the feature level um, 12.2. But this means that we actually have access to our shader mo model 6.0. That would be pretty neat to use our uh, shader model 6.0. We could do it like a Um, <coughs> let's see, it wants, a, a pointer to a regular character array. So we could, uh, set our target here and let's see and we need to set this const and then actually we move it in here we will do some uh, operations in terms of uh, <coughs> Uh, figuring out which target we want. And then we will uh, store, pass in our flags. We will uh, pass in uh, um, zero as our secondary set of flags. You can uh, uh, do some other compilation options here. Uh, I have a uh, child effect. I don't know anything about that. Um, 
I really never used it. And then we want to uh, store, give it a pointer to the variable that receives a pointer to the blob interface that stores the actually compiled code. And then we can do the same thing for an error message. So what about our wrapper actually storing our bytecode? That would be pretty neat, I think. So therefore, let's create a member variable where we can uh, well, is it just 3D blob? I think it might be. No? Uh, I just spelled it wrong. Whoops. ID 3D blob. Um, by code. And we will set that as zero. And we will simply give it the opportunity to use that. We will need to pass the address of that pointer so that we can store the actual pointer in that address. And then we would also like for it to be able to pass out a error message. So we will also give it the error message in case we do get a compilation error. All right, we do some manual error handling here. If the result is unlike SOK, we simply print out the uh, shader loading error was, and then we pass out the error code. We do not uh, do any uh, specific parsing of it. You could do that if you wanted to, but yeah, I'm going to skip that. Next, we want to ask uh, our system if we uh, didn't uh, uh, run into a pro pro problem here. Maybe we want some information about the error message if there were one. Um, um, if this pointer is set, there's an error message and we will um, uh, print out the shader compilation error and we will use our error message here uh, where we will get the pointer to the underlying buffer. It's just a data structure. Uh, so we're actually kind of free to interpret this as we want. Uh, let's see, do we have any other methods? Yeah, we can release it, we can get the size of it, and we can ask if it can be cast as a different interface if we wanted to, but we will simply get the buffer pointer. And since it's an error message, we might hope that it's able to be parsed out as a series of characters. Let's hope that. Um, I'm unsure whether uh, these values up here are actually able to be parsed out as a series of uh, uh, um, characters. We could test it. I uh, really have no idea. But what if we cast the information as const char pointers? This means that we could simply uh, pass it out as um, information here. I think uh, this would result in, if it would only were numbers, that we probably either would get a series of numbers or would uh, end up in a situation where uh, we would simply just get some, th some, some nonsense printed out. But anyway, we could um, um, print out our um, um, information here. We loaded the shader. And we simply pass in our file name here. And we tell that we successfully compiled something here. If we get an error message right now, we could return so that we uh, do not um, uh, print that out in case uh, we didn't succeed in actually loading the shader. We would, since we created this uh, object here, and since it might be allocated, uh, we uh, this will go out of scope. So uh, um, I think it will de be deallocated since it's not referenced anymore. Um, 
Yeah, I think so. Uh, I don't actually know about the interface, whether it uh, succeeds in su successfully relo uh, resetting. But um, let's see, if we have a um, bytecode pointer here, well, it's already possible to set that as a uh, null pointer. So we can check on it, it being zero. If it's not zero, we simply want to release this. Uh, whenever we uh, uh, destroy a shader, we of course want to call release as per default. Let's see. All right, this is basically our shader wrapper. Which is uh, great stuff. We now have a... Uh, no, 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 we forgot something. Um, I still need to uh, uh, tell the um, program actually what kind of target output that we want to compile towards. And we will ask for the uh, shader type here. If it's a vertex shader, we will set our target here to be our vertex shader 60 is it that terminology let me see i think so uh let's see uh ps yeah let's try uh, compiling to 6.0 um and we of course need a break here and a semicolon there uh, otherwise we will uh, need to um uh, whoops Uh, we want to compile a pixel shader, and then the target will be, uh, of course, pixel shader 6.0. And we need a break here. Okay. Uh, if we uh, do not have any of these cases, we would like to uh, uh, not break, but actually return here. Uh, not case, just default. Um, and we would like to print an error, yeah, unsupported, um, shader target. Uh, compilation target. All right. Let's uh, test this out. Also, you will get a feel for the actual debugger in terms of the uh, shader. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, we could create a um, shader. Let's include this for testing in here. Uh, pipeline shader. test shader and uh, we can create an empty one and we will initialize it and uh, let's create a, uh, a directory that is called uh, shader vertex shader hlsl and then uh, we of course want uh, the hlsl shader type of uh, the vertex shader let's try that and this needs to be a literal because it's a wide uh, character array. This will not compile because, uh, yeah, you can even see that we have a, a problem in terms of uh, handling the memory location. Um, but as you can see here, um, we have an shader loading error, which is actually here. And of course we have a loading error and we couldn't cast it to a const char pointer. So that doesn't make any sense. Let's remove that. We didn't get any output. Um, but yeah, that is of course because we haven't created a shader. And since we pre-compile a DLL that is used inside our application, that means that this is actually the application and every um, uh, part of 
the lookups that the engine does is actually relative to the application itself. So that means that we don't need to create shaders in our engine. We want to create it in our application, which is pretty fine if in case you're doing a um, game that runs on a engine DLL. Uh, that means that you can uh, specify um, uh, shaders relative to the game directory and uh, um, yeah, you don't have to fiddle around with uh, subfolders of the engine and so forth. Um, so let's see, I can't spell this right. So I think I need an S on this. Yeah, shade does. And uh, we want to create a vertex shader dot HLSL. Actually, um, since it's a Microsoft programming uh, language, um, Visual Studio uh, recognizes those. We don't care about the actual uh, uh, type we choose here. Let's just do a vertex shader dot HLSL. And it immediately creates, it creates a uh, um, method here, uh, which is uh, the standard uh, entry point for a uh, method here in terms of uh, uh, shader programming. Remember, here we actually specified an entry point. So if you chose some other entry point than main, you would have to uh, write another function here. Let's just see if uh, our program here actually uh, uh, gets found by our uh, shader compilation alg algorithm. Let's see. Uh, we don't want to compile this, so we exclude it from the project, even though we can open it. Uh, let's see. Whoops. Shader loading error was Blah, blah, blah. And maybe we want to look that up. Uh, but we also get a, a shader compilation error. Hmm. Well, that's peculiar. Maybe this value that we get actually is the same as a um, compilation error. Let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see <laughs> a return code. Uh, maybe we want to translate this uh, return code here. Let's do a calculator and then switch this to a programmer. Then we can type in the hexadecimal number. Uh, we get a flag that is 88. 76 uh, 88 7, 7, 7. error codes let's look it up do we find anything that resembles this No. Nope. Anyway, it might simply be a compilation error code. So we, we uh, in reality, get both um, these. OK, uh, it doesn't recognize the uh, compa compiler uh, target. So uh, that either means that, uh, let's see, uh, we uh, wrote in the wrong target or maybe our feature level doesn't really support it or uh, uh, maybe this compiler doesn't uh, maybe these are newer actually no anyway um verdict shader pixel shader Well, let's see if it complains if I revert back to 5.1. Usually that's a failsafe. Uh, 
five one here. Let's try that. Yeah, now it, it complains that there are no ma main entry point. So uh, our feature level might not support uh, five point uh, six um, I'll have to look into that. I don't know if it's the compilation uh, um, method or it's uh, let's see DirectX compile shader six o. HSL. Okay, so we need a DirectX shader compiler that can compile programs that are higher Okay, so So that's the problem that we ran into. The compiler itself, the method, uh, doesn't support um, uh, Shader Model 6.0, even though our feature level does. Uh, so we need to find a um, way to compile that if we want to use it. Um, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, four, six, six point oh. For shader model six, you use uh, here. Okay, you can always look up that it's uh, it seems like a standalone program. You would probably just have to load the bytecode afterwards. Okay, you can always look into that. We will just use uh, 5.1 uh, for now. We aren't uh, doing ray tracing anyway in this series, so uh, we don't need to upgrade to 6.0 or 6.1 yet. Um, but yeah, at least you know now that uh, in terms of Shader Model 6, you need to use the standalone program uh, that Microsoft provides here on this GitHub repo. Okay. But no problem, we uh, got our code running by uh, downgrading to an earlier version. 5.1 is pretty fine, uh, as long as you're not doing ray tracing. Um, and as you can see here, there's still an error in terms of the loading. Um, I'm not sure whether it's the same. No, it changed. So it's a different loading error. It was, uh, remember, it's just parsing out that we weren't getting the SOK, meaning that something failed. But we now do get a different compilation error. Main entry point was not found. And uh, if uh, you were uh, awake when I did this, you see that I actually uh, commented, commented, commented out the entry point. Now that we have an entry point, we basically have a shader program, and you can see here, we successfully loaded the shader program. Right now it doesn't do anything, but we compiled a shader program with an entry point that although it doesn't do anything, is actually successfully compiled and stored inside the bytecode. Great stuff. That is basically it in terms of getting set up with shaders. Of course, we're not done at all with shaders, but we had a goal that was to create a, a wrapper for shaders and their compilation, which we've done. And w then we need to create the actual shader program. We will return to that later because it makes more sense when uh, we can see the whole pipeline uh, uh, kind of like um, uh, doing its thing. So now I'll be taking questions if there are any. Um, and uh, if there aren't any questions, I'll uh, round off this uh, part of the video series and then I will do a 
half a minute, maybe a minute break, and I will continue on the series. Next, we will do the root signature since uh, we can't really create a pipeline without a root signature. And um, we might contemplate how to do these things. Um, we could do a wrapper. It's faster to just set it up without a wrapper, but it's usually somewhat of a hassle to uh, manage your input uh, states um, um, by hand, but we could do it. We will leave that as a question mark and we will decide whenever we uh, get to the uh, actual uh, uh, pipeline implementation. Okay. It doesn't seem that there are any questions. Uh, so we should probably just uh, create the wrapper for the uh, root signature. Yeah, okay, I'll end the recording here. Uh,